Mackenzie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Round of applause, please, for part two. Hey. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice to hear that the dissension is that, that people going, it's obviously right. No, it's obviously wrong. Because if you think you two are sitting together, and I was going, look, it's just an agreement, and you're going, yeah, but surely time passes. Anyway, we've looked at the past, enough of the past, let's put that behind us now. And just <laughs> <laughs> So would that explain the past, if things had just moved and changed? I think we've kind of ticked that off. You know, if you think about this experiment, what I'm saying is, if you ask yourself, if things change over time, would that explain this experiment? And the answer is, yeah, if things change over time, that would explain how Seth could draw that thing, then put the paper down, then we could see that they matched, then he could remember doing it. If things changed over time, that would agree with what we saw. But often what we do is we don't ask the next question, because our first question is answered. We don't bother asking anymore. And the next question is, what if things could just move and change? Not over this thing called time. Would that explain it? And if you look at it that way, you're going to go, well, actually, yeah. If things could just move and change, if life could just come from here and hit your eye and change your brain, and then we change the slide, and then you could just move your body and make that thing on the paper, that would also explain it. So do you see what I'm saying? We miss that second question because the first one seems to answer it. If we went to a Darren Brown show and we go, hmm, if people could mind read, would that explain what we see? And you go, yeah, it does. Well, that's obviously done. Let's move on. You wouldn't bother checking any deeper, and I'm thinking this is one of the cracks behind which the perfect illusion of time hides. So let's have a look at the present. The present. We say things take time to move and things happen over time, but what do we really mean? We say a car does 100 miles an hour. This is actually a picture of 100 miles that I carefully calibrated. <laughs> this is a picture of an hour. This is a picture of my personal car. <laughs> no, it is actually that big. And <laughs> I still think it's in the box. Right? So that's uh, so off the internet, whatever. So we say a car does 100 miles an hour. This is important because that seems to prove that cars and miles and hours all exist. But all we actually observe is that the car moves and the earth spins. The earth constantly spins and the cars, if they're moving, are moving. Interestingly enough, it so happens that if the car is doing about 100 miles, uh, as the car moves 100 miles, a point on the equator will move about 1,000 miles. It's actually 1,100 miles. <clears throat> what it is is this. The earth is 25,000 miles around. We say that it spins uh, once every day, once every 24 hours. What that means is that this palm tree will be doing about 1,100 miles an hour. And you say to people, well, how long is an hour? And they go, well, it's how long it takes a palm tree to do 1,100 miles. And you go, well, how long does that take? You go, well, it takes about an hour. And you go round and round in circles. All you actually observe is that the earth spins and that the car moves and that you can compare the two things. Instead of saying an hour, you could say 15 degrees of rotation. The point is that when you say a car does 100 miles per hour, you slip this word hour in. And it just kind of gets in like a bit of a con, but it seems to have credibility. Everyone knows what you're talking about. But I could phone you up, really, and say, oh, man, what done for speeding. I was doing a tenth the speed of a, a palm tree on the equator. And you go, you idiot, you know that speeding is point <laughs> the speed of a palm tree on the equator. It would be clumsy, but without using any reference to time, I could still convey uh, exactly how fast I was going. I could convey it as a fraction of the speed of light, which would be even more accurate or whatever. Not the car, in other words, we can simply say the car travels at one tenth the speed of the equator point. What's the difference between these two things? What's the difference between miles per hour or one tenth the speed of a point at the equator? And it's not semantics. Miles an hour suggests that miles and hours exist. But it also implies that time exists and that time is needed for things to happen. We say things take time. It will take me an hour to get to Birmingham or whatever. You know, when we take time, where do we take it from? Where do we take it to? Are these just words? Is this semantics? Is there is an issue of semantics here, but I'm saying the semantic error is entirely with the people who believe in time. And it's really annoying that they think it's with me. I mean, you've got all this extra stuff to prove, mate. You're the one making up an invisible past and an invisible future. I'm just saying it's all here now. You're the one with the semantic issue. <laughs> <laughs> time suggests that the past and future exist. So you go, yeah, yeah, time. We need time. Time passes. The future exists. The past exists. And you never see any of these things, but you're walking around totally convinced they exist. Some of you are, anyway. 
old stoners, it kind of more of my level. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the difference between miles per hour or tenths of a, a point on the equator? If you just say that, all this suggests is that things can exist, which we seem to observe. I hope no one kind of disagrees with that. Things can move, which we seem to observe and that we can compare their speeds. So we can do that, we can compare the speed of one thing to another. And that's all I'm saying. I said at the very beginning, there's a tangled mess, which will sound complicated, and there's a very simple thing. And the simple thing is, I'm saying, is things move and we can compare their speeds. If you stick the word hour in, you start thinking hours exist, you think hours pass. How do you say that without using the word speed? Speed. So well, this is, the, this is the thing, is if you get the idea of time, and you say, I've got this idea of time, Speed needs time, speed exists, therefore time exists. Yeah, I can say that for this to move from here to here, it needs invisible blue monkeys. I can prove it to you. I've moved it, therefore invisible blue monkeys must exist. Because I said that they were needed for something to move. If you say that things need time to move, or that speed is a function of time, it's a kind of self-fulfilling but empty argument. You see what I'm saying? So what are you saying there? What are you saying there? I say what what the event that actually happened there? What so I'm saying is that we start off by saying that a car does 100 miles an hour. And I'm saying there's no such thing as hours. I'm saying the car moves and we compare its, its distance or its speed to something else that's moving. And this is the car crash thing. You have to ask this question. What if things can just move? I go, oh, you mean over time? I go, no, 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 just move. Because this is what I directly observe. I don't know why or how they can just exist, I don't know how any of this stuff can exist, I don't know how it can move, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist and it doesn't move. And if someone was to say, ah, but things exist and move over time, they haven't added anything, they haven't told us anything extra or useful, they've just stuck a couple of extra words on the end. You see what I'm saying? So, I'm asking what's the first observation, and what I observe is that things seem to exist and they seem to move. And then I'm asking, will that explain everything that Newton and Galileo and Einstein and Hawking got confused about? And if it does, then it means things just exist and move. You don't have to add anything to um, that. Sorry. Um, the concept of uh, entropy is one thing that is Addressed on very slide strong for years. the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, what's your views on that? Um, I, we will get to that. There's a slide there. The slide is already here, if you want to be pedantic. The, um, <laughs> If you think time exists, then you'll drop a vase and you'll see that vases tend to break instead of reform. And you'll go, ah, oh, this is a proof of the direction of time. But that's because you've got this thing, time in your head, and now you're looking for proof of it. It's like looking for Drongo footprints. Ah, oh, that could be well there, you know. If you don't have the idea of time in your head, you go, right, things break. Okay, things break. Well, that's it. It's kind of obvious that they break. See what I'm saying? But this doesn't prove, the, the critical question to ask is, does any of this prove that there's a past and a future? Yeah. But one minute, one minute the vase was in your hand, the next yeah. minute the vase was on the floor broken. Yeah. So for that to happen, it would have to be able to move. But I accept it has to be able to move. But in order for it to move, yeah. okay, somebody has to move it. In, yeah, order to energy. Not, in order for it, even if it, I accept that, it's, I accept that it's energy, <coughs> but it's the whole. In a sense, to me, it's from listening to any the concept of time is just a measurement which we as human beings have accepted that works as a system yeah. for us. Yeah. 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 So we, we, we invent the word time, yes. yes. Yeah. I accept that. But that's just as a measurement. Absolutely. And Einstein, Galileo, and Hawke yeah. and Newton are all wrong. In what respect? Well, because they think it's real. That was what the whole thing at the beginning is. <laughs> it's all about we want it to be. It's as yeah. real as no, no, it's, money is as real as we want it to be. If I decide that I really don't want gravity to be, to be real, I really do not want it to be real, that's no effect. It's real. There are things that you have to observe that seem to be real. So I'm saying this time thing, people are saying that they think they've deduced that there's also a thing called time that flows, and it flows from the future through the present into the past. We can remember the past, but we can't remember the future. That seems to be two very different things. Yeah, it's getting confused between using time as a tool, like you use money as a tool, as a bartering tool, you use time as a, a, no, schedule, a scheduling tool. Sorry, yeah, yeah. But the other side of it is that Einstein and other people are actually taking it as just something tangible that yes. can be travelled so through and manipulated, through. and that makes it very real. And you can travel yeah. through, that you can speed up or slow down. Yeah. yeah. Do you understand that at the beginning of their books, like Stephen Hawking's Brief History of Time, he doesn't say 
it's just a system we made up, it's obviously always now, but let's pretend for a laugh that it, it exists. He doesn't say that. Isn't it it's just worth describing our perception of it? Really. Like, like the same way with the window that we think we're Why seeing. Why would he left. have this idea of shooting a bullet through a time portal? Yeah. Because in that, that, that uh, sequence, there are two people. And if you look at relativity, and relativity, everyone now, you know the Large Hadron Collider? They're mm. spending millions of pounds a day in that place. Mm. And all of them, if you chat to them, if you go to them, time obviously doesn't exist, they won't go, yeah, of course you're absolutely right, let's just get on with our work. They go, no, really, you don't understand the first thing about it. Quantum particles can borrow energy from the future. Time travel has been proven in various ways by nationals. You see what I'm saying? So it, it seemed kind of obvious to us. But it, it's both obvious and not obvious. But I, I'm saying, I'm agreeing with you all. Yeah, absolutely. It's just the system we made up. But then we have to explain, why do you think it is that you can see the past but not the future? If they are things that really exist and that have unique... Mm. But if, if you're saying there's no flow, then why, why do... Not people. There's a flow of energy, there's a movement of stuff, you know, you let a vase go, it hits the ground, it shatters, the chances of that happening are very high, the chances of the opposite happening are very remote. It never happens though, does it? Never. No, it never happens. <laughs> Although, you can say that, I mean, if you had a vase made out of three magnets, you might find that sometimes they get straight. You know, if you look at these things in great detail, but, but I'm saying that is how matter works. You know, if you chuck an arrow through the air, it will tend to go pointy end first, because that's how matter interacts. But if you believe in time, you will think, ah, oh, this is a proof of time. There are slides that cover all these points. I'm not avoiding them, so we will address them with pictures. <laughs> so all I'm saying here is that if you talk about mass per hour, you start using the word hour, and you've got to say, do you really mean hour, or is that just a useful word? Because I don't like being told that I'm using semantics when you're using semantics, you know, someone who's believing in that time, mm. you know. And we're talking about Stephen Hawking, he's a top bottle, he's a very bright bloke, he's got paid a lot. You know, all of the people at NASA will tell you that time exists, and so on and so on. So, anyway, you say Bolt, you say he does 100 metres in 9 point whatever it is, seconds, 9.8 seconds. But another way of looking at that is that as he travels 100 metres, a hand on a clock travels about 100 millimetres. So all he's doing is he's running 100,000 times further than the hand on the clock, or and 100,000 times faster. We call this a clock. We say this is a, a clock measures time. Einstein says time is what clocks measure. Well, all this is doing is it's measuring the distance and the speed. It's measuring the energy that comes out of the clock. And we're comparing the two. We could compare the clock to him or him to the clock. Yeah, but we tend to look at this and oh, this is a measurement of time. You know, it's a measurement of. A, a, a crystal that's vibrating or energy coming out of a battery, whatever. But we see these as seconds and we see these as meters. And really they're both just distances, they're things moving and we can compare them. I'm just saying you've got to be careful, you start using those words like seconds and hours, they get more and more reality the more you use them. All we observe is that the Earth spins and things move. This is a watch that I own. Um, it's a 24 hour watch, I photoshopped these hands out. And you can see the numbers around here go all the way around to 24, and this hand just goes around at the same speed that the Earth spins, because that's all a watch really does. These hands just make it more and more complicated because they chop up that rotation. It always annoys me that the third hand on watch is called the second hand. It's like, I don't get a break anywhere in explaining this stuff. <laughs> but if you went on the North Pole with that watch and you put it up there, this red hand would constantly point at the sun, at the sun as the Earth spun beneath you. So all a watch is, is it, it's a useful model of the Earth going around. Because all we need to know is whether we're on the sunny side or not, so we don't bump into things when we walk around. That's it. But the whole, this whole book and this talk came from me lying in the bath wondering when the sunset was going to be, and then I realised, well, the sunset's always being. It's just here. Yeah, you know, when you were three and a half at two o'clock in the afternoon, there was a sunset. It was just over there somewhere. <laughs> you could have jumped in a car or a plane and gone and had a look and come back if you had it fast enough. When they were flying uh, Concorde on its initial test flights, they flew into the sunset repeatedly, and because they flew faster than a thousand miles an hour, they saw the sun rise and then sink and then rise and then sink. But didn't Branson do that in 2000 or something? He did as well. He flew around the world, yeah. Christian Branson. Oh, really? In the right thing. You hear about it a dozen times or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, and saw the sunset. Because, you know, it's, it's a bit like if you had an astronaut floating in space, you have to go, well, the bright part of it must be the day and the other part must be the night. How you doing, Buzz? Oh, my left arm's really tired, but my right arm's only just woken up. 
Yeah. It's always now. It's just bright or dark. You know, the, the only reason it's dark here is because you've got a big ball of mud shielding you from the sun. That's it. But it's always just now. That seems obvious, but whatever. So things could just move and interact with that explain the present. I think it does. So I've crossed it off. I'm going to move at a fair pace here because we won't get to the end anyway. We can discuss anything you want to discuss. Put your hands up. But no, okay. The future. Should we have a look at the future? Yeah. yeah. I wonder how this is going to turn out. <laughs> if you go to any local park and you want to see the future constantly arriving, you may well think that you do see the future constantly arriving. But what you'll really see is things constantly moving and changing. Clouds will constantly move and change. People on swings and basketballs and dogs and scooters. If you put it in the frame of time, you'll go, oh yes, these things are moving and changing constantly. It's an interesting point with a cloud that they always seem to move forwards. Anyone here have seen a cloud going backwards? Yeah. It's quite odd because we have this bias towards everything going everything. forwards. If I want to get some money out of the cash till, I walk yeah. forwards to the till, I press the buttons forwards, the money comes out forwards, I give it forwards to the barman, he pours a drink forwards, I pour it forwards into my mouth. Everything seems to go forward. Yeah. Uh, if a car reverses over a cat in a driveway, you know, to a squirrel watching it, that car's gone forwards. You can tell it, no, it went backwards, just, you know, because it wasn't going pointy in first, doesn't mean it's going in a particular direction. So we always see things going forwards, and we always see things happening now, but we can call that the future constantly arriving. The one thing all these things will have in common is there'll be energy, there'll be energy going from the inside to the outside, or in this case, it's being blown by the wind, but we see energy being released. You get a candle, that candle might up last for four hours, you might say, but in fact, it's just how much wax is it and how fast does the wax come out? This dragster, if there's fuel in it, it can do what it's doing, but there's always energy coming from the inside to the outside. And I think what we see as the future constantly arriving is really just energy flowing, and typically it flows from the inside of something to the outside of something. If you get a balloon, you could do this two balloons, you could blow one balloon up, you could not blow the other one up. If you let them both go, you'll find the one that you didn't blow up just falls to the ground or does nothing. The one that you blow up will zip around the room, either in a chaotic way or in a very streamlined way, or it may just burst suddenly. And we might think, ah, oh, the future is kind of predictable, or it's uh, very random, or things happen subtly. But in fact, it's just the release of energy. Energy can be released in orderly or chaotic or smooth ways. What I find interesting here is that with a balloon, when you stick a pin in it, it makes a very loud bang. But of course the bang's in the balloon. It must be sitting there quietly, mustn't it? It's just got to be in there. And you put it in when you blow into it. And you go, I'm just going to put a bang in this balloon, you blow it and you hold it, and that'll stay there until someone sticks it with a pin, which is quite interesting, I find. It's a bit like, you know, this stick here is very quiet, but I can put some energy into it by lifting it up, and then release the energy, we're making noise. So at this point, the stick has got some noise in it, if you want to look at it that way. But what I'm saying is things don't arrive from the future, there's energy in here that is released, and if that balloon wasn't blown up, it wouldn't do anything like that. Get a firework rocket, you know, why does it scoot off into the sky? Is the future arriving? Or is it because there's energy inside of it coming outside of it? It's obvious, and any physicist will tell you, of course there's energy coming from the inside and the outside, but then they'll add, and it climbs into the sky over time. And I hope to show you with the map thing, we can keep having all these pointers to time, but if we never actually see the darn thing, you know, we, we haven't got the territory. Whew, we got through that one really quick. <laughs> so if things could just exist and move and change, where energy was flowing, would that explain the future? Again, I've got a tick here. I think it would. The flow, the direction, the order, and space-time. So a little look at these. These address some of the issues about ageing and growing up and whether you can get to Mount Pichicuchu or whatever it was. Might as well help. Of time. <laughs> we say things take time to happen. If you get a load of pans of water and you put them on a, a stove, you'd find that you could leave them there for a long time and nothing would happen. They wouldn't evaporate. In practice on Earth, they would evaporate because if you look out your window, or if you look at the light coming in through the window, you'll see that there's a massive ball of fire about 100 million miles down the road, which means it's hot here. You know, observe that it's hot because we're so used to it, but it is. You might as well stand next to a fireplace and go, God, the universe is warm. If you've got four pounds of water you it somewhere where there wasn't any surplus energy, they would just sit there for eons, for decades, for millennia, whatever you want to call it, doing nothing. And this clock would apparently go round and round and round. 
So we might say that things take time and energy to happen. Anyone believing in time will say, oh yeah, of course they take energy. We know it takes energy to change something. But energy has an effect over time. I'm going, that's interesting because you just leave it up to time, nothing happens. It's a bit like having a mate who just doesn't help you out but claims good things happen when he's there. You go, yeah, but they happen when you're not there, mate. You know, you're just hijacking. Interesting enough, if we connect it to some gas, and we, we turn the gas on, and we set these rings at different levels, you'll find that at the very place where the flames lit, change happens. So if this pan was over to the left slightly, you'd start getting change here. If you put some dye in there, you'd see the swirl of dye moving up there. If there was no gas here, not much would happen. More gas, more gas, more gas. These pans would evaporate faster and faster. So it's ironic that time on its own does nothing at all, but the moment you apply energy, things happen in exact proportion to the amount of energy that you apply and exactly where it applies. Now, it's obvious to any scientist or physicist, but I'm mean saying that again, they would say, yes, but it happens over time. And I'm saying that's just because they've got this idea of time and they keep trying to shoehorn it into everything they see. The flow of time. Proven that it doesn't exist. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> I see it. I, all I want to do is I want to try and, and wander through this. And I, I don't want us to finish you know, too much after 11 uh, because there are people who look at their motorised arms and insist that we can only drink until half past 11. This while we can drink until half 11 and then the tube goes at 12. So. Does anyone know what time it is now? They said 11 actually. Is it 11 now? Oh, are they at 11? They said that. Oh, okay. Let's check. What time is it? It's 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. We could ask. We could set a runner up. Let's try and get through a couple more things. Uh, time seems to have a direction, as you were saying, though. You know, it's kind of going to get harder and harder to climb that mountain or whatever. Uh, it has an order, and space time, if we'll get to that, we shall see. Everyone happy? We've got broken bars. <laughs> it's a fundamental thing. Um, uh, again, Stephen Hawking says time according to Sir Stephen Hawking. Right? He's a sir. This is another thing you've got to appreciate. It. It's a sir. They didn't go. We're going to call you Sir Stephen Hawking because you keep pretending this thing that we all know doesn't exist does exist. But because you're in a wheelchair, we let you off. You don't say that. All right? It's not scientific. <laughs> So he, Stephen Hawking is saying, look, there's some other reasons for believing time exists. There are some arrows, there's some clear indications that it has a direction and a flow. Thermodynamic air arrow, cups of tea tend to get cold. They don't tend to get hot on their old. Vases tend to break, they don't tend to reform. Always makes me wonder where we keep getting these vases from. Because we always must have slightly more than we break. Which doesn't seem to make sense to me if all they do is break successfully. Cosmological arrow, the universe seems to be constantly expanding, this is fairly undeniable. Wow. Uh, direction which time in the universe expands. Psychological arrow, we all feel that this talk has gone on far too long. Thermodynamic <laughs> <laughs> arrow, the way that things break, they fall, they tend towards entropy or chaos. Your bedroom will tend to get messy and not tend to get tidy. Well, ironically, when it's reached a certain point of messiness, anything you move will have to tidy it up slightly. <laughs> <laughs> Which explains my bedroom at the moment. <laughs> I'm kidding that point. But what I'm trying to say is here is, yeah, okay, you drop things, they break. Lovely dark. But this doesn't prove that there's a past, and it doesn't prove that there's a future. To put it another way, if time exists and it flows and it has a direction, would this prove that? You go, yeah, if time exists, then yeah, this would prove it. We regularly see things break, but we don't see them reform. It happens in one direction. It seems to correspond with time. Yeah, agreed. But if you ask the next question, what if things could just exist and move, would this be possible? Yeah, yeah, that's also true. But I'm trying to point out that we don't ask that second question because we seem satisfied with the first question. It's a, it's a trick that we have to watch out for. The cosmological arrow, as uh, Stephen Hawking says, the universe is constantly expanding. And it's an observable fact. Um, wow. Fred Hoyle. Well, okay, well, let's assume that it is, or assume that it isn't. Yeah, well, it's assume assumption. that it is. What happens is Fred Hoyle looked at uh, uh, the stars, and what he noticed was they were all red shifted. As the star moves away from you, the, the light is stretched slightly and becomes redder. And where, whatever direction you look in the sky, you'll see that all of the stars seem to be leaving us. We mm. can't just be my VO. The thing is that <laughs> they say that wherever you are in the universe, this will seem to be the case. So it seems to me that the universe is constantly mm. expanding, like an explosion. 
By doing some maths, you can work out that about 13.75 billion years ago, it should have all been in the same place. So this seems to prove that time flows in the direction and that the universe is 13.75 billion years old. But if you ask the next question, you know, what if things could just exist the moon? You ask, could Fred Hoyle have just looked at these stars and seen what he's seen? You go, yeah, he could have. Could he got a pen and paper and done some calculations? Yes, he could have. Could he have drawn a graph and extrapolated or interpolated it back and come up with a figure? Yes, he could have. So the fact that you see that the universe is expanding proves that things exist and move and change and that the universe is expanding, but it doesn't prove that there's an extra thing called time that is needed for this to happen or that this proves the existence of. It doesn't prove that there's a future that these things are heading into or that there's a past that they're leaving behind them. But if you assume time exists, then you will assume that this is an hour of time. What's the psychological hour of time, we'll get to that in more detail. There's a thing about people watching a, a football match. <coughs> so I've ticked it off, but we'll get there a little bit further on. Any questions? <laughs> uh, just, uh, uh, yeah, sure. It could, if, fair enough if, it's, if it, all it proves is that they exist and move and change. Yeah. But they all seem, but they all seem to exist and move and change in the, in one direction. Sure. And rather than going, so so, what explain it? Like you know, that's the question. Yeah. What does it explain? Well, it, it proves it perhaps proves that with the universe is heading for what they call a, a, a heat death or a cold death, where everything is just going to expand and become more and more separate and isolated and lonely like my love life over the last 10 years. <laughs> that may well be how things are You're headed. not alone. Yeah, things may well be <laughs> But the real question is, <laughs> and that's why I brought you all here tonight. <laughs> but the real question is, you know, that picture of the single clock, I'm saying, does time exist or not? You know, can you travel through it? You know, uh, I'm, what I'm really asking... But, I mean, if, if, you could, if you could exist and move and change, but the... the, the the opposite direction, wouldn't that be time travelling essentially? Uh, we can get onto that. No, that would just be things moving and changing in the opposite direction. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't think that the W7 comes back to crouch in because it goes back in time and appears there. It would just be... It, the question so is... So acknowledging things do go forward then? You're acknowledging things move in one direction? Uh, yeah, yeah, quite possibly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. So and, and the whole universe could be heading to, to you know, to kind of a, a mist. But the question is, is there an extra thing called time that exists, or is there not? Do we do we need the notion of time to have a past and a future, though? No. I'm I can agree no. that the future doesn't exist, but the past, I think the past does. Yeah. Well, this but I wouldn't say that has anything to do with time. All of the evidence you've got for the past existing is here now. Remember that picture mm -hmm. of the fossils and the pictures? All of those things prove that things move and change. And all of the memories that you've got are in your head now. And they seem to be very obvious proof that the past exists. But when you look at them very carefully, they're obvious proof that your mind exists and that it can change. But they're not... Because if there is a millisecond of past, then there is a millisecond of past. And if there isn't, then there isn't. We just can't be wishy-washy. Yeah, but la like, last Monday exists because the, earth went, the, the sun went around the earth. Uh-huh. Yeah. that now. Nice. And that's all we're talking about. Is how many times the Earth went when you in reality? In reality, yeah, I agree. Uh, but in reality, what you're actually talking about now is the contents of your mind, which is here now. You're, you're, if you have this idea that, uh, of course, the Earth went around the sun, I agree. But if the only record of that is here now, then the only proof is that here and now exists. No, but I know that the great buffalo was killed seven days ago. And if I explain it to somebody why the buffalo died, I go, it didn't happen one sun sure. going around the earth. It happened seven times. When you sure, were... I agree. There are some, there are some slides that will... So you're that. Really, really just arguing about uh, an agreement we've made. Well, in that case, yeah. it's stunning that Stephen Hawking didn't realise that at some well, point. Well, no. Because he thinks it really exists. He thinks you can travel through it, you can walk it. Well, that's, that's it. He's entitled to his beliefs, irrespective of whether he's got Sir there or Sir. But not. NASA and Sir <laughs> and everyone else. You know, going with it. I'm saying, what I'm saying is it, it seems to be debatable, and I can show you that it clearly isn't. It's odd that the hardest conversation I have with people who agree with me, because, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. It's a belief system. If, if we adopt your belief system, how will <laughs> our lives change in any way? Well... <laughs> <laughs> Get out here sooner. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, but functioning yeah. like this day, like you agree that time is just a measurement. Yeah. yeah. If, if, the, if, if we adopt your sure. belief system, 
how would our okay. day to day change in any single way? I understand. The first thing is that I don't really. Stop trying to Sorry, do wormholes, I think. Well, yeah, well, there's a guy, there's a guy called Ron Mallet in America who's been trying to build a time machine. Yeah, and I actually sent an email last week, and I put at the beginning, I've been putting off sending this to you because I really don't want to disappoint you. But I think if you look at this, there's a question you haven't asked. Yeah, and I'm actually going to send these two over to just break his heart. They'll go, just the system, mate. Just the um, belief system. So you, technically, what I would say I am, I'm an isist. You know, error is, that's how it is. And I haven't really got a belief system. All I'm saying to you is, look, things are here now and they seem to move. That's all I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, I, I agree with you, yeah. but if, if, it, if, the, if I accept that, how does it, it change? Won't change anything, will it? It's, um, it's it. I mean, the, the, the whole point of this is really just to, to show a persistent illusion that Einstein suspected was there but didn't, didn't see. And, and I, think it, I, I think it's fascinating. I mean, Brian Cox did a, a, an entire program uh, called What Time Is It? He was talking about the mysteries of time. and he's really nice intelligent guy and I'm going I think I could solve this for you mate completely isn't that interesting and if you do solve that and there are slides uh, further on you step out of believing something that isn't true on in the, the human for us you know just lay people you see that when you think a problem is in the past and you can't do anything about it you realize there's no past it's all here you know it might be dwindling in your mind in which case that's great because it's a small problem you can deal with or it might be because someone's over there, you've got to talk to you, but there's no past that it can be in. And you also yeah. don't worry about the future because it's it's yeah. just here now. You should worry about objects coming at you at great speed. Especially as a, as a scientist. I, I agree with you, and I think the way you, you put it across is really well, but as I agree with you, I realise that as I agree with you, it doesn't really make any That's why it's a perfect sense. illusion. Yeah. But when you do step out of it, you know those magic eye pictures that when you first see them, you know the ones with all the ziggy lines, mm -hmm. and you certainly you can't see anything, you're convinced there's nothing there, and then you see it for a moment, and then it goes, and then it comes back, mm -hmm. and then it goes. But once you've seen it once, you kind of go, do you know what, I thought there was something there. Mm -hmm. And you kind of step out, you kind of go, God, I could be living my whole life really thinking that there was this thing called time. The tragedy, or so to speak, is that of course we're, we're going to change. We're like cars that you can't turn off. Yeah, we're always ticking over, so we wear ourselves out. But it, that's not time it, It's yeah. just energy running through you. Yeah, if I was to kill you now and put you in a freezer, you'd look great in twenty years. 